YouTube, it's Hanna Loba. If you want more Moto America content, check out the new and vastly improved Moto America Live Plus app. It's the only place you can catch all the race action in one place all season long. Click the link in the description below. Starting grid, of course, has the way they qualified. It's Cameron Bobier. That was a brand new track record. Sean Dillon Kelly broke the track record as well. Cameron Peterson in third. Yeah, and then we have Heron, Bobby Fong, and Posh coming from row number two. Great qualifying for Brandon Posh. J.D. Beach, Gagne, and Baz with Chavi Flores, Ashton Yates, and Bryce Prince back there on row number four. And then we have Ezra Bobie, Benjamin Smith, and Danilo Lewis. Nolan Lampkin, Andrew Lee, and Dion Campbell. Richard Kerr, Flinders, Arango, Giannato, Sierra, and Bobby Davis will roll up around that row number eight. And then we have Manny Segura back there. So 20 laps scheduled for Steel Commander Superbike race number two. Lights are off and we're away. And it looked like a clean start this time from the front row. As Cameron Bobier leads him down into turn number two. Is anybody going to try to make a bid as Heron tries to go up the inside? No, it's going to be Cameron Peterson who slots himself into second place. And Bobby Fong there in fourth. Yep, STK follows right in behind the 50 of Bobby Fong. So right now, you know that Cam Peterson's got pace. Heron's not going to be worrying too much right now. Cam Peterson's right where he wants to be. He wants to latch onto the back of the six, put some pressure on him, but more importantly, not let him get away. So then halfway through this race, you heard Cam Peterson say he feels like he's got some really good race pace at the end. So if they can kind of not let this BMW run away from them early, then uh, there might be a chance there late in the race for them to do something with him. And if you look at the margin of victory and the amount of laps we had yesterday, it was just about three tenths of a second, Jason, per lap. That was going on with Cameron Bobier over the rest of the field. Yeah, and you can see here, Bobier makes a small mistake at the top of the corkscrew in the sense that he was just a little bit wide as they started coming down the hill and uh, just a tiny bit. So right now, when you're on brand new tires, you kind of want to make hey why the sun is shining literally here at Laguna Seca. As you can see, these guys are all trying their best to, to put the fastest laps they can down. SDK has made his way through on that 50. As you see Baz going underneath the second Tyler's bike of JD Beach. Baz moves over to defend that position. But Sean Dillon Kelly goes through on Bobby Fong. You saw Gagne trying to do the exact same thing. Heron now makes a big oh. bid on Camp Peterson. So this is Heron's plan as well. He does not want to let Bobier get away. And you see somebody's down there in the background. Can't tell exactly who that is, but it's going to be one of our front guys because you can see the gap. It is 96 of Brandon Posh, and we have not seen him do that hardly at all this year. So uh, walking a little bit gingerly. The Vision Wheel and 4X star Suzuki rider down after a really good qualifying here. But now you can see Josh Heron really pushing hard in the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati Pentagalli V4R. Initially, when he made the pass on Cameron Peterson, there was about half that gap. So right now, Josh Heron is on an absolute tear to close the gap to Cameron Bobier. Bobier has no idea what's going on behind him. Well, he'll know. You know, he's going to see it because yesterday, as SDK now makes a great pass on Camp Peterson up into the corkscrew. So now we got BMW first and third. He had a plan today, as did the rest of them, not to let this guy get away. Hannah. For Cameron Robier, when I talked to him this morning, the tire decision was still up in the air after trying that R8 little harder compound tire there as Josh Heron's trying to get around Robier. He said the R7 is probably the one that he's going to go with, and he did decide to do that ultimately for the race. But after such a difficult mid-season here for Cameron Robier, as Josh Heron goes up the inside for the lead, but he couldn't make it stick, Cam Robier back out front. Cam said it just feels good to be back in the race weekend routine and find a good flow. And that's what Josh Heron was trying to do, actually, is disrupt the flow and just a little bit of a mistake. But Heron right now is looking very aggressive and very racy right now as he's going to try to close that gap again. Bit here, I think STK's got some good speed, though, as well. You can see he's just going to dive down to the apex. He, he knew he couldn't make it and uh, he just lets the bike run out a little bit. Does a really nice job of squaring up turn two. Inside of SDK going into three, but here it is again. This time he's got the apex speed controlled a lot easier that time for Heron. And he will lead this lap coming across the line. And now we've got a fight, Greg. Four guys, three different brands up in the front. And they've been able to keep the number six at bay and now even control the pace. Mm -hmm. I mentioned at the oh, top of the show is heartbreak for the 45 into the pits for the attack performance progressive Yamaha team on such a good weekend. So Laguna Seca regrouped, 
And uh, you can see what he's done. Bobby Fong here too, as we see a big crash. This is gonna be down, looks like turn six. That's Bryce Prince, I believe it's Bryce Prince. No, it's uh, Deion, Deion Campbell. Campbell, sorry. Deion Campbell out of 13th on a, place. On a BPR, Bryce Prince Racing R1. And uh, we've enjoyed having Deion Campbell back in the paddock this year. And he's been doing really good in Stock 1000 and getting better each round. So glad to see he's up and okay. That Ducati is different from the BMW. Yeah, it's really easy to do that down in turn six. There's a big dip there. And sometimes you can, you can actually... Also want to just update you. I got word that Richie Escalante is set to return the Steel Commander Superbike on the Vision Wheel and Forex Star Suzuki team as SDK goes up the inside. Is it going to stick? Wow. Nice pass from Sean Dillon Kelly. Richie Escalante set to return at Mid-Ohio, Jason. Yeah, like I said, when you see on your pit board that somebody's actually catching you, it will definitely put the hurry up in you. And if he thinks that this pace at 24-5 is a little bit too slow, he's pulling away. It's this great pass as SDK slots right in between only a bike width apart between Heron and Bovier. Sean Dillon Kelly finds that pass. Bobby Fong's board's gonna continue to tell him that he's pulling away from Gagne. He closes right up onto the back. The Yamaha doesn't look like it quite has the acceleration out of turn 11, and he's able to maneuver all the way down from the top of the corkscrew. He can close back in on this group. Cameron Bovier taking a little wider line down at the bottom of turn number two. Produces lap times a little bit different. They, it rolls through the corners a little bit better. Um, a lot of times he's able to open up entries a little bit more and let the bike go. Now you can see SDK is just starting to lose a little bit of uh, uh, grip maybe. Uh, uh, Cam Bovey has a shot. He's going to take a shot at him down here into turn number uh, five. Makes that pass. So that might be the first little thing that we've seen from SDK where he doesn't quite have the edge grip to get off the turn. And he, he wasn't able to get off of turn four with Heron for him to just let off the lever and try to get up alongside Heron like Heron did to him earlier. Over the crest of turn number one, down into two, Bovier trying to look up the inside, but Heron Closes feels it, it. He feels it, lets the lever off. Bovier trying to square it up to try to get a drive. Not sure turn three is the spot to do it. Tight again into three. So like what Heron's doing right now, for those of you watching at home, is very, very difficult to do. Here comes the white flag, so it's out, one lap to go. And now for Cameron Bobier, when does he attack? If he yeah. has room, Heron has Can't put on such it. a masterful performance. Look how tight Heron is. There is absolutely no room to pass him up the inside. What a move into turn two by Josh Heron. And see, he goes tight into here. Now, what Heron's got to do is control the apex speed of four. After he gets through turn four, which is coming up now, he's got to control this. It's got to be picture perfect, and he's going to move over to the left. And he's going to make it very, very difficult for Cam. You can see him over to the left. That's what he's got to do. And then break as deep as he can. He really has to do this for about one more corner. If he can do the same thing by the time they get down to turn 10, I don't think that they can get by him going into 11. Very impressive what he's done here. Aaron talked pre-race about his experience here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. It's paying off into the corkscrew. He's going to go to the left and back to the right. Bobier trying to go around the outside, maybe make a move to square it off and try to get a run on him down the hill. But look how hard Heron is on the gas. All the while, SDK is there in case this ends up in tears between the top two. But Heron gets a really good drive down the hill. Boy, the opportunities to pass are running out. Bobier's got to get a good run on him. Heron with another good drive to the final corner of the racetrack. Here they go into turn 11. As tight as you like it, SDK makes a move for second place, but now foils the plans of Cameron Bobier. And here comes Josh Heron in a master class of wow. racing at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. What a win wow. for him and his Warhorse HSK Racing Ducati team. JD Beach has got by Chavi Flores. This is the battle for seventh. As you see Chavi now trying to go back up underneath, he makes that pass. Let's see if he can get him on the run to the line. Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki, Chavi Forrest, Tyler Cycles, BMW, and Forrest will get seventh place with Gagne holding on to fifth. That's so important in the championship. Jair family and uh, praying for him and uh, wishing him the best. The celebration continuing here as Max now handing that trophy over to Josh Heron, the third win of the season for him, seven podiums. He said over the next few weeks, all he, he needs to work on his fitness a little bit, just the, the length of these races. It gets a little long here at the end of the weekend, but also just taking the time to to enjoy life. And this is something that race fans are going to look at for a long time. SDK in third, Bobby Fong, Jake Gagne in fifth, but Hannah's down in victory lane.